Do you want to save an extra $20,000 a year? We're going to show you how we saved an extra $20,000 a year. This one saving hack is what put us in front of our peers and allowed us to quit our jobs and travel the world. Allie and Matt here. So what is this savings hack that saved us an extra $20,000 a year? So we call it house hacking. And if you're like most people, your number one expense is your housing. So what is house hacking? So house hacking is a technique where you purchase a house, either a single family house or a multifamily with the intention of renting out either the other units or the other rooms in order to cover your mortgage or reduce your housing expenses as much as possible. In some areas, you can even get paid to live there. So we're gonna break this tactic down, whether you're single, you have a family, or you're not ready to buy it and you just wanna rent. First, if you're single, you have more options in front of you. What me and Allie did was we had a shared house and all through college, both of us lived in shared houses with roommates. Even after we left college and I had started work, I still lived in a shared house. Allison was living in a one bedroom apartment. This is what we did before we ended up buying a house. So what we did was we rented a large house and it was four bedroom, three bath, and we shared the master. And that made our housing expense about $300 each per month. And that is really reasonable. Matt, before this, he was just renting a room out of that house and it was like $425 a month. And so this is much cheaper than I was paying for a one bedroom apartment that was $990 a month. And he got just the same amenities. Actually, he got a garage and a backyard and a nice swimming pool. And so renting or renting a house is a great opportunity if you're not ready to buy and you still want to enjoy the benefits of a low cost of living. But you could also look at multifamily properties if you're ready to purchase, buying a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, living in one unit so you have more privacy that way, and renting out the other rooms. That's more the technique I would go to for a family, which is our second mm -hmm. uh, scenario. That way, you don't have to worry as much about who's in the house, vetting your roommates as closely, especially if you have children, things like that. You have your own unit, your own space um, that you live in, and then your other tenants have their own private space also. Um, one caveat to this that we found in our town, the multifamily properties weren't in the area that we wanted to live. It wasn't close to our work. Um, so there were some other factors that you need to consider and think about, mm -hmm. um, but Every city is different, so hopefully in yours, if that's a tactic you want to use, you can find a multi-family property that would be perfect for you and your family. So how does all of this add up to an extra $20,000 a year? It's a good question. So I'm going to run you through what our housing looked like from the time we left school to the time we quit our jobs. So when I first moved out to Bakersfield, I told you guys and Allie mentioned, we were, I was living in a shared house. I paid like $4.25 a month and then paid some utilities on top of that. When Allie first moved to Bakersfield, she was living in a one bedroom apartment, which was- nine ninety something like that. And utilities? With utilities, it was probably 1200 bucks a month. Yeah, so we were paying uh, close to like $1,700 a month, maybe $1,800 a month for both of us to live separately. Um, from there, we ended up moving into the master of that shared house when people in the house kind of shifted around. The master was $725 a month, I think, but we split that mm -hmm. and then we had some utilities. So we dropped our housing to say maybe $850 or $900 mm -hmm. from like $1,800, which was awesome. Cut it in half. And then we started hunting for our own house. So when we bought our house, like Ali said, we were able to rent out all three rooms and cover all of our mortgage. And we brought some of those people that we were living in that shared house with over to the new house with us. So we didn't have to find all new roommates. Um, it was really a great situation. So we went from about $1,800 a month to just about $0 a month in the course year. of three to four years. So with anything, there's always pros and cons to consider. So some pros, obviously money is a big pro. <laughs> yeah. You're saving more money and that creates um, more opportunities for freedom. The second pro is that it's very social. Mm -hmm. So just like being in college, being in the dorms or being in a shared house, 
Uh, you have a lot of people around, things to organize, activities with, um, family dinners, whatever it is that you want to do. Another thing is security, which I didn't realize. Living in the apartment by myself was the first time I'd ever lived alone. And it was a little frightening for me just being a single woman alone in an apartment. And then moving into a house, I felt a lot more secure and safe knowing that at least there were other people there who could hear if something was happening or if I got sick and needed to go to the emergency room. It was just kind of a nice security blanket knowing there were other people there. So to cover some of the cons, the first one that most people come up with is a lack of privacy. So for us, we strategically purchased a house that had a big master bedroom. It was like the size of a studio apartment. And so we felt like we had a lot of space to ourselves should we just need to go upstairs and be alone or not be around other people. And so I think considering what type of house you move into or what type of situation you move into, considering privacy is important when you make your purchase or choose the place you're going to rent. Definitely. That's going to make sure that your house hack is successful. Another con is bad roommates, (laughs) which thankfully we haven't had any bad roommates. We initially started screening roommates just by going with our gut and by knowing friends of the people that are moving into our house. So it was a pretty small community where we were living and it was easy to know friends of friends and people who needed a a space to live. And so, yeah, we went with our gut a lot of times. Most of the times, Mm -hmm. actually. Went against all the rules of uh, (laughs) selecting tenants. And I think it's different when you live in the same house as someone um, versus if you had a multifamily and you were renting out a standalone apartment to them. You probably want to be more... uh, scrutinizing about yeah. their job and get a credit report, things like that. Um, but when we met people face to face, we just sat with them and talked for a little while, figured out where they worked. Like Ali said, a lot of times those roommates came from referrals. So mm-hmm. we were already kind of in a friend group or new friends of theirs. Um, so we would rely on that recommendation. Yeah. But yeah, we always had really good luck with that. Um, the thing I will say, the more rooms you have, at least you can kind of spread that risk out, particularly like with a multifamily. If you have three other apartments you're renting because you bought a fourplex, if you get one bad tenant, you can kick them out. Mm-hmm. And at least you still have two people paying rent. Um, one reason to maybe go larger if it's within your price range or uh, that's available to you. Yeah. Now that we don't live in the house and we're still renting out all four of the bedrooms, we use a service called Cozy.co. And basically you send the tenant a screening application and they fill it out. They pay like 35 bucks and then we receive back their credit history and a background check. And so that really gives a peace of mind and it also doesn't come out of our pocket. The The potential tenant pays that. And so we have a link below if you're interested in checking that out. Definitely, that'd be huge if you are renting those separate apartments or if you just wanna take that extra step for the people before you let them into your house. So another con that people think of is messes. This kind of goes with bad roommates, but just sharing space, particularly the bathrooms and kitchen. So early on we got maids and it was the best decision we ever made, I think. Maids, so. maid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the best decision we ever made because we had them come every two weeks. They cleaned all of the common areas. They would also clean your room if you wanted or change your sheets. But it was about $100 each time they came. So 200 bucks a month, we just split it between all the roomies. Or now that we rent it, um, all utilities included, we just have kind of up the price of rent and it just includes the maids. Mm-hmm. But that keeps all the common areas clean, um, all the bathrooms clean. Like nobody has to worry about coming home from work and doing chores. Um, granted we still kind of tidy up after ourselves and all of our roommates did too, but you know, like deep cleaning, getting out like the mop and everything else wasn't really our responsibility or the roommate's responsibility. And it removed any real tensions around, uh, cleaning house. So some things to consider if you're really looking at house hacking as a strategy for you. First is picking the right house and the right type. We've talked some about what we looked for in a house, a big master. We talked about multifamily versus single family, if you're renting rooms versus other apartments. Um, Location, whether it's close to work or in an area of town that you wanna live in. We spent about six months looking for our house and doing a lot of numbers as far as how many rooms it had, 
how much we thought we could rent it for, what the mortgage would work out to be, to try to find the best deal for us to make sure that we would pay as little as possible or even make some money every month. So spend a lot of time looking for the right property for you and don't rush into one. Mm -hmm. Other considerations are good tenants, like we mm -hmm. talked about. Use cozy.co, we definitely recommend it. It's super easy. It takes all of the onus off of you, lets the tenant pay for all the application, then you get to know if they've ever had evictions, how their credit is, all of that thing, all of those things. So if you have any questions specifically about where you live and your situation, leave them in the comments below. We will happily give you some advice and look into where you live and what your situation is to see what would work best for you to decrease your housing expense. If you like this type of content about money, minimalism, and travel, make sure you subscribe and ring the little bell so you get notified every time new videos come out every Wednesday. Bye. Dana. <laughs> Mom. Bye. <laughs>